Okay, it's been some 15 hours since I uh, left this here. See, um, I'll show you, like this is just one long strip of fiberglass. This is one that's about half as long because that's all the space I had. And these will go around the outside of the boot as a flange. These are the three pieces that I made as well, of carbon fiber. So, I'll show you what I've done with this piece. <laughs> just to show how having a, a random thread kind of fall underneath the fabric and, and ruin your your look, um, I've done that. But then I thought, I've got all these other bits, why not try and spell something, but I didn't have enough space. So, that's about as close as I could get to awesome in the limited amount of space. Um, I'll use this wedge to to kind of slide under there and the whole thing should release pretty easily now with all that feel. I've just done an edge here already, so... Oh wow! Whoa! That is coming off so easily compared to the other one. Look at that. Effortless. Absolutely effortless. Even the bits here where it's just resin, it's not even cracking. Wow. So I mean, you can now see what difference. If you haven't seen my other video where I made the other pieces last time, wow, amazing. Yeah, don't ever do try and ever make a mold and and not use release agents. I was too lazy. I thought it's just a big flat piece. It's not going to need any release agent. No. Definitely will. Wow. This is a joy. Absolute joy. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's it. So, let's bring that up closer for a better look. No air bubbles in sight anywhere. So yeah, that roller really did work. However, with vacuum infusion, that wouldn't even be an issue. So, um, when I start making things with a vacuum pump, which I've got here, things will be much better than this again. I've been asked several times, how would you cut carbon fiber? And people think it's going to be too tough and it's going to ruin things. I just use a regular old grinder. This is just a bit of clear resin and nothing else. Watch how easily this snaps. And it's pretty thick, I mean, that's similar to the thickness that we had of um, carbon fiber breaking the other week. So, wherever. Yeah, that just snaps straight away with no reinforcement. Okay, I've got here several pieces I've just made of the carbon fiber um, squares. These these are all made. I sprayed a, an epoxy resin gel coat with a spray gun. Then I basically brushed on in this piece. Well, I brushed on all the layers. And then I use and I use the roller after each layer to um, roll out the air bubbles. So let's see what we've got. 
this piece has two layers of carbon fiber and then a layer of fiberglass. So 260 gram per square meter carbon sheets and then one 450 gram fiberglass. It is, if you look, somewhat flexible. It's somewhat flexible. This piece has the fiberglass square in the middle. You can see a little piece of fiberglass there. Okay, this piece is the same. Two layers of carbon fiber and one layer of fiberglass, except that the fiberglass is in between. And this one is much less flexible. Because it has a layer of carbon on both sides, the bottom and top. Um, the bottom and top, as I said in the sandwich construction video, are the parts that get compressed and expanded. So stretched and compressed, the top and bottom. So um, when you have two carbon sheets on the top and the bottom, it does pretty well. When you have a sheet with fiberglass on one side, the fiberglass stretches quite easily. So in this, play, in this case it's stretching, in this case it's compressing. So it's, yeah, it doesn't work as well as when you have the glass in between. Best, however, is when you have all carbon and this is five sheets of 160 gram carbon and that's far less flexible far less I mean yeah this is much better now all of these pieces have a very good finish okay you can see there no dry spots okay there's no big air bubbles anyway However, I'm not sure if you can see it there, if you look very closely, there are tiny, there, there are a few very, very tiny air bubbles, but you have to really look at it closely to notice them. I believe if the resin was warm when I sprayed it, this wouldn't have happened, so next time I'll try that. I'll try and warm up the resin, which should spray much thinner and all the bubbles will just flow to the surface and pop. And by comparison, this is one of the pieces I made the other week. You can see all these dry spots. This had no gel coat, I just basically brushed it on. So um, lots of dry spots and bubbles and stuff. It's uh, pretty bad. I didn't use a roller on this one. It's much more flexible, probably due simply to the fact that there's an extra layer on the other pieces. And so yeah, this is a bit thinner, so it will be more flexible. The piece with five layers of carbon is thicker. Sorry, this is the piece with five layers of carbon. It is a little bit thicker than the piece with two layers of carbon and one of fiberglass, even though they would be roughly about the same weight. So um, that's... I suspect due to the fact that in between each layer, as I applied more resin, just overall there was more resin um, added to it, and therefore adding to the thickness. That's one downside of doing wet layup with a brush. I'll try and show you here how thick the... Yeah, you can see that. You can see how thick the clear coat is. You can just see it, the clear parts. Alright. Hmm. Well, there. Anyway, it's, an, it's a noticeable thickness and I don't like it. It makes it look very shiny and everything, but it's just a weak point, a weak point that can crack. It's the first thing it's going to break. Um, by comparison, I'll show you a piece which was made for me, a sample of how things are going to look when I use the vacuum pump. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, this here is a thin layer on top of carbon, I've shown you this before I think in the other video, and a very thick sheet of carbon on the bottom. Okay, And this, this side is not shiny because there's a release film that you peel off and it, anyway that's how it works. If you look there, that, okay this works out to be 
per square meter this 1.55 kilograms okay of carbon fiber per square meter where is it this piece would be about 800 grams per square meter so almost half the carbon fiber thickness wise they're about exactly the same or perhaps this is even thicker you can I don't know how well you can see that but yeah this piece here which I made with a brush is yeah it's thicker it's definitely thicker it's, it's somewhat thicker than this piece made vacuum infused even though this one has more carbon in it twice as much carbon so um, if I made a piece that was this thick out of this it would just be an uh, indestructible basically and when I do make pieces like that I will try to destroy them just quickly I'll show you the level of shine on both of those okay depends on what you really prefer this one here the surface is smooth very smooth you can still see the reflection of me in there see but it just doesn't have that deep gloss that this one does however this will as I keep repeating uh, the, the, the amount of resin in this just adds to the weakness or makes the part weaker I wouldn't say adds to the weakness because this is still incredibly strong if I gave this to my brother I really doubt he would be able to break this piece not that yeah, there'll be a way to break it, but it'll be much harder than, than the piece I made last week. And breaking something like this would be much, much harder still, especially if you had this sort of thickness. And this does bend a little bit. Because it's so thin, it does bend somewhat. Probably only a little bit more bending than this piece here which is considerably thicker and thickness adds to rigidity and just one thing I forgot to mention in addition to all these carbon fiber pieces I made two bits of fiberglass the other one is twice as long as this but I'm not going to show it because it's the same thing pretty much um, just a one sheet of fiberglass it's pretty flexible I'm going to be using this to make a flange around the boot of the car and I've done this which says awesome with a bunch of vowels missing because it was the, sh the piece was too short right anyway um, I've done that to show that you should be careful not to drop separate you know when you're laying a your carbon fiber down you gotta be careful not to drop a piece on because that's what will happen it will stick uh, just imagine having that line in front of all that completely messed up okay so you gotta be careful with that and yeah that's again just wanted to show how flexible that was and it's strong I mean if there was that's fiberglass but if there was no fiberglass in there this would just snap if I did that I don't want to test to see how much I can push it because I want to actually use this for the boot of the car so um, you'll see how that gets used in other videos